The results show that Asian Americans are less likely than whites to believe the ability is inborn and more likely to believe that one can learn to be good at math. Asian American students also reportedly spent more time and energy focused on academic pursuits, but also said they felt more pressure from their parents to be successful and excel academically. It's not as if this has just snuck up on us. A study released way back in 2005 was a hint, noting that while at the time Asian Americans were only 4% of the United States population, they made up 20% of students in Ivy League colleges. Their numbers are growing as they become a force in American culture. And it says something about cultural upbringing, something American parents perhaps should pay attention to. They are the husband and wife team that, along with being Yale law professors, also co-authored the book The Triple Package, how three unlikely traits explain the rise and fall of cultural groups in America. Let's welcome Amy Chua and Jed Rubenfeld to Midpoint. We thank you both for being here today. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Well, we know we have three things that we need to talk about here. Short time, we got about five minutes, or a little bit less here in this segment. So go over these if you will. I hear superiority complex, insecurity, and impulse control. If you would, take superiority complex first. What do you mean by that? Okay. So these are three qualities that are accessible to anyone that are propelling certain individuals and certain groups to disproportionate success in America in a very tough economy. The first thing we call a superiority complex is a sense of being exceptional or special. And any parent can instill this in their child. But the second is really key. It's a sense of insecurity. Um, a feeling that you're, you still need to prove yourself. You're, you haven't quite done enough yet. And the third, impulse control, is basically self-discipline, the ability to pick yourself up off the floor when you fail and, uh, and resist temptation. And it's really the combination of those first two. Like, how does somebody simultaneously feel exceptional and insecure that our study show generates drive and motivation, this idea that I've got to work hard and prove myself. Now, is when you're talking about a superiority complex, are you indicating that parents need to push their kids to be superior or teach them not to be superior? Where's it go? Well, what it looks like from our study of these uh, groups and individuals who are doing better in America today is that they uh, gain from having the confidence uh, of, these, uh, of this feeling of exceptionality that's communicated to them by their group, by their parents, uh, 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 by their families. But as Amy says, it's not a, any particular group's uh, exclusive property, these, these, these traits. Anybody can have them. Any parent can do it. And you know what's really important to stress is, yeah, we've written a book about how some groups um, uh, are doing better in America today despite the tough economy. But what we found is that the groups who do better today are different from the groups that did better 25 years ago and that they decline. There's almost an iron law of uh, these immigrant groups. First generation does well, second generation does even better, third generation declines. So you were mentioning Asian Americans, so their test scores are 140 Well, points let me higher. stop there if you would, please, because Go I want to stop you right there because that's one of the keys here in this cultural education divide here. What is it that American parents, not, I'm not, not Asian Americans, but American parents need to take. When they see numbers such as this, that 50% of Asians 25 and older have a bachelor's degree, yet only 28% of Americans 25 and older have a bachelor's degree. What are they supposed to take from that? The first is high expectations. This is what our studies show. And it's not just, by the way, the Asian Americans. You know, it's Indian Americans, um, uh, Iranian Americans, Nigerian Americans, Mormons. High expectations is one big difference. The idea, don't just tell your kid this kind of self-esteem thinking, you're great, you're amazing, you don't have to do anything, you're perfect. Rather, the message is, you know what? We believe in you, but you need to strive harder. You need to hold yourself to a higher standard. And in that, do you notice that in high expectations is both superiority and insecurity? The message isn't like, hey, sit back, you're perfect. It's I believe that you have potential, but you're not good enough yet. You need to work harder. Are you saying that Asian parents do that better? They are. Oh, the, we have all these studies that are, it's documented, hundreds of studies. Okay, 25 seconds higher. before we take a break. Why are they doing it better? Well, I think it's actually cultural. And, you know, they, frankly, it's a, it can also be a problem of taken too far. But it's the insecurity. It's the, it's the drive. Yeah, it's the insecurity of being an outsider. And you see this in a lot of immigrant groups. They come here, they don't know if they can survive. And they also think that there might be discrimination. So there's a common thing. You need to get 110 just to be treated fairly. So you have all this very 
you know, a lot of uh, high expectations and also this kind of don't give up instinct, which um, comes from this Confucian quality of eating bitterness. Okay, which... hang on one sec. I'm going to ask you to hold that thought. We're going to take a break. Come back there because this leads us to discussion of another sort here in America. How to not only improve the balance for everyone, but maybe stop being so touchy about sometimes what people say and think. We're back on Midpoint. The discussion, certainly not fresh off the boat, as a TV show would claim, but it is indeed part of the conversation with regard to cultural mores and educational standards in America. Let's welcome back authors and Yale law professors, also husband and wife, Amy Chua and Jed Rubenfeld. Let me ask you what you said the last segment here, and I want you to clarify this because I bet you this caught a lot of people here. Are you saying that minorities are more insecure, and because they're more insecure, that makes them want to succeed more? Not all, uh, I mean, all minorities have this insecurity, but it's only coupled with the sense of extreme ethnic pride and knowing where you came from. That combination is what's really interesting. So you take Nigerian Americans, they've come, they're proud people. They come from the Igbo people. They're, a lot of them are, you know, have a real strong sense. And then they run into discrimination and being an outsider. And it's that combination that's really powerful. Now, what about the American parent who's sitting out here right now? It's going, all right, wait a minute. You've shown me all these numbers. I'm not sure if I agree with all of these. Then what are you telling me that I'm doing wrong here? Why is it that my kids aren't this smart? Well, I can tell you one thing that we have found and that uh, all these studies support. For about 20, 30 years in America, we've had this uh, self-esteem movement. So psychologists and educators have been telling American parents, just make your kids feel good. Don't ever say anything to them that might, you know, wound their ego or bruise them. And the data, you know, are in now, and that has a bad effect. I mean, they have done experiments where they give uh, kids self-esteem boosting messages, and then other kids don't get that message. The ones who get that message do worse academically and otherwise. So really, you know, maybe we've gone a little too far, maybe way too far in that direction. There are some people who, again, of course, there's always critics of things. You're talking about different ways of, of culture here that drive these educations. There are some stories out there who have looked at your book and they said, wait a minute, you are completely discounting history, economic forces, and first wave wealth from immigrants that came over here, made money the first time. Do you feel that this criticism is warranted? No, it's, it's completely not warranted. I mean, first of all, we acknowledge that the reason that some communities are really poor, of course, has to do with slavery and, uh, you know, discrimination. But the most interesting studies in our book show that the kids of poor and poorly educated, sometimes illiterate, Chinese, Vietnamese, Korean restaurant workers, factory workers, taxi cab drivers, I mean, these are parents with no education. Their kids are far outperforming the children of much wealthier and privileged white kids. So this is really saying, let's not be politically correct and say we can't talk about this. We should say, let's open this up for debate. People can disagree, but what are some households doing? What are they instilling in their children? What kinds of attitudes are they doing that is achieving these results? Let's open it up and uh, rather than saying no one can talk about this because that's, that's racist somehow. Well, it still seems as if to a lot of people that what you're saying is uh, certain groups such as Cubans, Nigerians, Mormons, Jews, Asian groups, Asian Indians, Iranians, whatever, that they have more of a reason to succeed here. To a lot of people, it seems as if you're denigrating standard white Americans. Well, I don't see how we're, you know, it's not a matter of denigration. We have a tough economy, you know, declining upward mobility. Now what, uh, and everybody knows about that, but what they're not being told is that in hundreds of thousands of American families and in certain communities, People are still achieving the American dream. They're still uh, experiencing upward mobility at rates way higher than the rest of the country. Now, these so, are American values. The, these yeah. are American values. All three traits of the triple package are traditional American values. The question is, why can't we pull back the curtain, see what they're doing? This is something we can all learn from. I think our response is that American exceptionalism, the superiority complex, that's America. The sense of insecurity. America started off as an underdog. We're going to prove ourselves. Our system, our way is better than Europe's, aristocratic Europe. So you're saying and we've lost our way there? Sorry? We've lost our yeah. way there? And, and Ben Franklin, it's all about discipline, thrift, hard work. The triple package are quintessential American values. And our message is not denigration. It's like, come on, America. Sometimes immigrants exemplify some of these because they've come from much more terrible countries. They think that there's a lot of opportunity here. So in a way, this is almost like a message of hope, which is we've had some tough times, some hard wars, 
um, you know, a lot of economic problems. I think this could be a wake up call. Then let's do the wake up call in here. There, we're out of time. The book is called The Triple Package. It involves superiority complex, insecurity, impulse control. Amy Chua and Jed Rubenfeld are the authors. You've started a conversation. I think it's going to be a lot larger. We're going to continue this again at another time. I thank you both for joining us. Thanks for having us. All right. Up next, among all the things opponents may use against Scott Walker in any presidential race, may be education.